Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video, I will be talking through the general timeline of my A-level course. I won't be able to cover everything, but I'll be hitting most of the main points regarding exams and university applications. With that out of the way, let's start the video. My A-level journey began even before my IGCSEs wrapped up. In the middle of it, I took a leap and submitted my KTJ scholarship application form. This application was more than just paperwork. It required my predicted grades and a scholarship essay that showcased my aspirations. Right after my last IGCSE paper, I started preparing for the interview. The interview itself turned out to be a stimulating conversation with questions poised to challenge critical thinking. Fortunately, I secured the scholarship, a huge financial relief. Stepping into KTJ, I faced a unique challenge, being a Janentake. Coming into KTJ, I was repeatedly warned about being a Jan and Take. I was told by teachers and my head of sixth form that being a Jan and Take requires a lot of dedication to balance your extracurriculars and your studies in a truncated timeline. Well, nothing could have prepared me for the stress that was to come. You need to experience it yourself to believe it. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Let's go! Coming in KTJ on January 2022, we had to sit for our maths exams on June 2022. Having only less than six months to prepare, the maths teachers sped through the content to cover everything. Once we covered the syllabus, there were tests after tests. I remember one week, we had four tests. Then came the actual exams. At first, I felt, felt nervous and underprepared. However, after each paper, I became less nervous and gained a bit of confidence. The grade boundaries were insane this year because some papers were incredibly difficult. But overall, I'm glad that it worked in my favor. Coming back from summer break, I was launched into the world of university applications and upcoming AS exams while still having to do the Oxbridge Engineering Workshop. Our team in charge of this devised a task where participants needed to construct a railway bridge designed with future flooding in mind, alongside a traffic light system coded with Arduino. We came up with the mocking rubric with higher scores given for length, the weight held by the bridge, whether the bridge can split in half, reliability and efficiency of code, and the effectiveness of their 5-minute pitch and presentation. We researched the bridge building ourselves, developing a triangular truss structure made up of a collection of straight members. Using this concept, we tested out a multitude of bridge designs and reached several versions able to withstand a, several, a sizable mass with considerable length, showing the importance of problem solving and collaboration in reaching a final design. We included cost as a criteria because although a solution may work in theory, if it's uneconomical, it won't be viable. Crafting my personal statement was a monumental task. With a mere 4,000 characters, roughly 500 words, every word had to be a strategic masterpiece aimed at impressing admission officers. I dedicated months to drafting and redrafting, refining it to perfection. It's this year I had 11 drafts, but I feel like I definitely did more, maybe around 20. Guidance was invaluable, namely my assigned teachers and the college lab mentor, as seen here. However, even after all that, I acknowledge that my PS fell short of its potential. I've gotten a lot of feedback, which I agree with, that points out that my PS is cliché, not academic enough, and bland. I get cliché because I'm literally talking about sustainability and renewable energy. I mean, I am really interested in exploring this field, but this is a topic which some kind of everyone talks about. I get not too academic because I didn't go in depth as I could have. The details I've written about are quite general and the sort that anyone can find just by reading Wikipedia after 5 minutes. But it's alright, I mean I did give my best and I would give my PS a solid 6.5 out of 10. 
It's just one flop, not a flop era. And sometimes, after the hardest flop, comes the biggest sleigh. <coughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, what do I do? <laughs> For my AS results, there's not much to say here. Physics was a little bit lower than what I needed, but chemistry was higher than expected. My admissions test was a short assessment comprised of physics and mathematics questions. Despite a momentary computer crash, I recovered within minutes. Here are some tips for future test takers. Ensure strong Wi-Fi and gather essential tools like calculators, pencils, papers, etc. As for my interview, I received the notification literally on the last day of AS exams. I remember walking out of that exam hall and coming into my room ready to jump on my bed and open Netflix. I win! Here's an interesting side story. So my interview was actually scheduled for 11 p.m. in the night. The thing was, at the time, I was still in KTJ, and the KTJ Wi-Fi switches off automatically at 11.30 p.m. So that was a big risk. Thankfully, rescheduling was an option, and the admissions team was remarkably responsive and accommodating. On my interview day, everything fell into place. The interview maintained a casual conversational tone, making it my most enjoyable interview experience yet. During breakfast, I noticed the UCAS track update. The heart-pounding rush as I logged in, waiting for those crucial moments for the page to load was nerve-wracking. When I finally saw Imperial listed on the accommodation homepage and I finally accessed the update, Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god! What is that? Despite my low AS grades, Imperial has honored me with an offer. I was very grateful that Imperial gave me this opportunity, even though I frankly didn't deserve it. Luckily, I had a free period during that time so I could process all that had happened. The exam period was extremely long and taxing. Some days, I just wished it to be over. But just remember, take it one step at a time. Make a mistake from a paper, just leave it and move on. Don't dwell on it too much. Focus on what you can do in the next hour, then the next day, then the next week. Time will pass infinitely slowly, but it will eventually pass. Thank you to my teachers, the examiners who marked my paper, and the exam boards that made the grade boundaries low enough for me to pass. Before I go, I want to give a big shout out to some of my most game-changing study resources. Faith Films has been an absolute game changer with their study advice for tackling past your papers for A-levels. I regularly catch up on their academic tips, study hacks, and productivity pointers. Save My Exams deserves a standing ovation for their super organized, to the point, and visually engaging notes. Seriously, it has been a lifesaver for me during IGCSEs and A-levels. Save my exams, saving my exams indeed. Their topical pastor papers are incredible for understanding the syllabus in more depth. A massive shout out to CIE Papers Solved as well for their mind-blowingly informative videos. When it's 1am in the night and I'm struggling with a question, I can always count on them on YouTube to have a full pastor paper breakdown. They explain things so well that I've been able to understand a question within minutes. Thank you so much for making it to the end. If there's any videos you want me to make or any advice that you want, comment down below. I'll respond to all comments since there's probably not going to be a lot of comments to respond to. Let's be real. <laughs> Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.